Hey guys, Spino Dude here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Collecte 2014 Quetzalcoatlus with Prey. Now this is one of the most unique as Darkid figures that's out on the market right now because it does depict Quetzalcoatlus in one of its many theorized feeding habits, which is eating hatchlings of other dinosaurs, like this poor unfortunate Alamosaurus. I believe it was confirmed that this is supposed to be a hatchling Alamosaurus that this pterosaur is feasting upon. And it is really cool to see it in a situation like this, but my one big complaint with this figure is that it is a standard size and it is not a deluxe. Quetzalcoatlus was absolutely massive and yet they don't represent it in deluxe form. Of course, I'd be down for having this as a standard figure than having another Quetzalcoatlus in deluxe form, similar to what they did with their Dino Clyrus. But overall, I just feel like it's a missed opportunity not to have this massive flying reptile in a deluxe figure. For a 2014 figure from Collecte, the detailing is decent. It's nothing to write home about, in my opinion. We have some nice Picno fiber detail running across the back there, as you can see. And then the wings have some nice folds and wrinkles in them throughout. This pterosaur appears to be a little bit shrink-wrapped and emaciated looking, especially in the midsection on the body and around the limbs. The head looks better in my opinion, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. And the transition between the chest and the neck has some nice sculpt work on it as well there. The hands and feet are sculpted pretty nicely, they do look a little bit strange, but for the scale this figure is at, I think they're perfectly fine in my opinion. The claws are not painted on them, but that's to be expected because of how small this figure is. Now the coloration on the body here is quite typical and boring, with the grey color for the wings, the brown for the body, and then a little bit of a creamy yellow color for the underbelly, but the colors really start to get interesting when we move up to the head here. The head has some really nice sculpt work going here, and is definitely my favorite part of this entire figure. I actually got this figure off of Amazon just for the sole reason to get my order over $25 so that I would get free shipping. And Amazon has a pretty bad track record for sending out broken or severely warped dinosaur figures. My Quetzalcoatlus here wasn't too bad, except it was packed with its head in the box like this. It did spring back into its normal position, luckily. And the tip of the beak was bent pretty bad as well. It was down like this, but I managed to fix it as best as I could. You could see there is a little bit of a notch there. But I think it adds a little bit of personality to this particular Quetzalcoatlus. I love the black color for the head with the red on the eye, and then the one red stripe with the three yellow stripes going down the snout there are actually, I never noticed this before, there are two red stripes on this side and two yellow on this side. There appear to be three yellow, two of them mashed very closely together, and one red stripe there on this side of the head. That's very interesting. We have a yellow spot underneath the eye as well. I love the coloration overall, I wonder if that's just a mistake on my particular figure, I'll have to look into that, or if that's consistent across all, all of them. I also love the red banding on the neck, and then the splash of blue with the stripe going down the back of the neck there, and then the little collar of blue around the neck. I think it's, that is a great choice, really complements the other colors nicely. And then the crest is beautifully done, that's probably my favorite part of just the overall color scheme, is just the bright yellow crest with the really nice fine black stripes going up there. I think that is really nice. And then these baby sauropod here, which is an Alamosaurus, I assume, has no paint on it whatsoever. It's just a solid sienna brown color. But yeah, overall, if you're a fan of Quetzalcoatlus, I think this is a pretty nice figure. It's also nice to see an Asdarkid that's actually landed and on the ground, because this is when they're most impressive, in my opinion, as well as far as posture goes, because they looked so unique when they were on the ground. And Collecte, if you ever see this video, please, please consider doing a deluxe Quetzalcoatlus or any Asdarkid figure. I would just love a deluxe standing Asdarkid figure. That would be so awesome. But in case you're wondering how large this figure is, it measures in at about four and a half inches long which is about 11 centimeters, and at the highest point, which is the top of the beak there, we're looking at about five inches, which is about 12 and a half centimeters. And for a quick comparison, here is the Collecte 2014 Quetzalcoatlus with Prey, next to our recently reviewed Collecte 2020 Fukisaurus. I actually think these two figures would look pretty cool next to each other if, of course, this Quetzalcoatlus had an ornithopod or a hadrosaurid style baby dinosaur inside of its mouth ra rather than a sauropod, because then it looks like this Fukisaurus is calling out to its youngling, which got snatched by this 
giant pterosaur. But anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. Let me know what you think of this one down below. Leave a like if you liked, and I'll see you guys in my next video. So take care, and bye bye